Hello, hello, it's me, Rachel, the Student Witch. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to talk about bullet journaling. Tis January, the month of planning, especially during the first two or three weeks of January that we have in Capricorn season. I don't know why, I just find that very fitting that the beginning of the year where we're all trying to get our shit together, it's also Capricorn time. It's mountain climbing, goal setting time, right? <laughs> Anyway, I'm here in my living room, my camera, I kind of have to do things upside down, so pardon any awkwardness um, as I try to show everything that I got going on here. It is a chilly day in Georgia. Um, I think it's cold in the whole east coast of the United States. We're going through a little bit of a cold spell right now, so I am so thankful I live in Georgia and I'm not in Massachusetts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, way too cold for my taste. Um, but yeah, so I'm here to talk about my work bullet journal and my witchy bullet journal and why I decided to keep these two separate. I'm going to show you my, my layout for 2019 in each journal as well as how I kind of organize things um, by month and by week. I'll try to make this fast. I'll try not to talk too much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm i planning as well, and I'm hoping to get this video up next weekend or before the end of January. That was my heat kicking in. I'm gonna let it do its thing because it's chilly down here. But anyway, um, I'm gonna try to get this video up and also record another video before the end of January having to do with planning. It'll be part of my Witching Through Grad School series that I got going on. Um, and it'll specifically be about the different planning systems that I use to stay on track and to try to be as productive as possible, but also make time for self-care while being a busy grad student. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and then in February, we got Fertility February going on, hashtag Fertility February. I'm trying to make it a thing. But basically, uh, last year was my first hashtag Fertility February, and I'm doing it again this year. I'm the Johnny Appleseed of the Fertility Awareness Method. <laughs> I'm trying to spread the gospel just so that more people um, are familiar with it, just so that more people know about it. It's, it's not very well known. <laughs> I'm super excited for Fertility February though, just to spread the word, and um, there's also a giveaway involved with that, so I will leave the link below. I don't even know which way is pointing below, because <laughs> I'm looking everything upside down, but I will leave the link in the description box to my Fertility February playlist that I have on my channel. You can check out the videos I made for last year if you're interested, and stay tuned, um, because I'll get that ball, ball rolling uh, the first week of February, so excited about that. Now that all that housekeeping and rambling is out of the way, let's dive in. Now, the two main things that are new this year round, actually, let me go grab last year's bullet journal real quick. Okay, so this is last year's. So the two main things that are new this year are the brand of the journal I decided to go with, which is this brand here, and this pack of stickers. So before I talk about the brand and the quality of the, um, of the bullet journal itself, I just got these stickers at Michael's Arts and Crafts store. I believe they're in the US and Canada. And this is their product, productivity pack. So to be productive, which I thought would be great for my work bullet journal. I only use these stickers in my work bullet journal. And they break things down. You, there's lots of little motivational stickers such as these, but then there's also organizational like to-do lists and today's focus kind of stickers. Um, labels stickers, appointment stickers for when you have appointments. So it's really great. I know there's a whole bunch of places online that you can buy stickers. Um, and all sorts of different types of stickers, but I this is my first foray into stickers. I usually keep my bullet journals pretty minimalistic, but I'm branching out. I'm getting a little, just a little bit more decorative. <laughs> 
The visual arts are not my strong point. Um, as far as creating visual arts myself, I love to enjoy them and study the visual arts, but I am not, my creative capacity is just not in that realm at all. <laughs> but I'm trying, I'm, I'm branching, I'm branching out, going beyond my comfort zone. Okay, so this is last year's bullet journal. It is a moleskin. I don't know if you can see, there you go. And it was great. I believe Moleskin. I did a bunch of research in December trying to decide what brand to go with. I was about to get a Loistrom, and that was until I found this brand right here. But I like the Moleskin. I believe that it's 70 or 80 GSM paper, and so I did get a little bit. I actually got more bleed through in here than in the Scrivwell, and that's because the paper is thicker. I'll get into that in more detail here in a second, but I the first two bullet journals I used um, were moleskin. I got a black one and then last year I got this red one. And I went with them because they were just easily accessible. Uh, I could just easily walk down to the university bookstore and buy one for around somewhere between 18 and $20, um, which is Kind of the price you're going to pay for an A5 moleskin notebook, but yeah, so I used a moleskin for two years in a row, and then I was thinking about switching it up to a different brand, and I looked at Loistrom, wanted to check it out, but then I did some more digging on Amazon, <laughs> and I found this brand, Scrivwell. I'll include the link to their website down below. Um, I don't know if I'm pointing up or down. I think that's down for you guys. <laughs> Here's that awkwardness I mentioned earlier. Um, but Scrivwell, I'm so impressed. I first bought the purple one as my um, spiritual witchy bullet journal slash book of shadows slash tarot journal <laughs> uh, just because I wanted to check it out. And um, I didn't mind. If I ended up not liking it, I would go ahead and keep using that. And then I would just go ahead and get a Loistrom for the work bullet journal, which I use more often. But I ended up loving it, so I went ahead and got a red one for my work bullet journal. Scrivwell, as it says here, these are A5 dotted pages. Um, they do have an expandable folder on the back cover, which I'll show you. And they have two page markers, two of the ribbons. And it's a hundred GSM paper. So that's thicker than the moleskin. So let me just show you. We'll compare the purple and the red. So as you can see, the Scrivwell is thicker. The paper is obviously thicker than the moleskin. The Scribble is also a little bit, it's A5. Um, they say this is an A5 size, but it's a little bit longer here, as you can see across the top, than the moleskin. You can see that here as well. Um, there you go, for size comparison. But I just, I just love these notebooks. Um, and the best part is that these Scrivwells are roughly, I would say, between six to eight dollars cheaper, depending on where you get it, than the Moleskin. I believe, looking on their website, the Scrivwell website, they were selling these for $13 or $14. I actually bought mine on Amazon back in December for, I got one for $11 and then the other one for $12. So that's cheaper than the $19 or $20 you're going to be paying for a Moleskin or a Loistrom. So that just sweetens the deal even more, right? So let's dive in here. And um, let's see, let's actually look at my work bullet journal first. So yeah, so I decided to 
keep things separate and just have a separate work bullet journal, mainly because I'm still very much in the witchy, pagany, pantheist, chaos closet. <laughs> Not a lot of people in my personal life and definitely no one I, I, you know, in a professional way have a relationship to knows that um, about my spirituality. They just know I'm definitely not a Christian or a Catholic anymore. Um, to my parents, I'm basically agnostic or an atheist or to my family. Um, but I'm still in the witchy, pagany closet. So just for practical reasons, I didn't want a lot of, if any, over witchy things in this bullet journal because I might have to pull this bullet journal out during meetings or while I'm doing research down in Chile and other people might be, might, see stuff in this and so I didn't want like my tarot card for today and you know written in bold letters on my, in my bullet journal just it's privacy reasons um but also having the difference between the two has helped me um just explore different ways of organizing my thoughts so as you're about to see in my work bullet journal, I'm very organized, lots of charts, lots of tracking, um, lots of, you know, to-do lists. It's, it's really geared towards productivity and making progress on my dissertation. Whereas my witchy bullet journal is, the structure is a lot more loose. And that gives my brain some breathing time. Um, my spiritual practice, it's, it's an integral part of my self-care because it helps me to practice mindfulness and kind of take a break from intense research and got to be productive. I got to write more. I got to edit this and do the revisions for that. And then I have to fill out this paperwork and then I have to do that. Like I, I take a break from that and I let the, my inner child and my creative mind kind of take more control with this bullet journal. And so that's another reason why I decided to keep the two separate. So let me see if I can maybe zoom in more. It might be a little, oh, going the wrong way. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. The lighting, okay, the lighting is decent. It's kind of a partly cloudy day. Um, so the natural sunlight is not gonna be its best, unfortunately, but Anyway, so my word of the year is power. And I have a little quote here from Alice Walker. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Super powerful <laughs> um, quote. And a nice reminder to remember that you have power. I'm reformulating my relationship with the concept of power and the idea that I have power, you know, and that I can trust myself. I've reached a point to where I can trust myself to exercise that power for good, not to manipulate other people or uh, hurt others, you know. So yes, uh, power is also going to help me uh, build my confidence, which is something I'm kind of working on this year. And in I'm in the early 30s. I'm 31. I just turned 31 last month. So I want the decade of my 30s to be about confidence and really just owning who I am and celebrating who I am. So uh, yeah, power is a great way to kick off that. And then I have my card of the year, which is the Fool. And uh, I just printed out a colored... Well, I actually had my husband print out <laughs> um, at his work. Shh, don't tell anybody. But um, I had him print out colored images of probably my top four imaginings or representations of the fool in the tarot. So this is probably one of the t only two overtly tarot kind of witchy things in this work bullet journal. So it's a little bit easier for me to hide it, right? <laughs> Um, so I have a quote here from Lee Irwin's Gnostic Tarot, fools follow where the path leads. And so I'm focusing on amidst all the chaos and turmoil, um, that makes it sound kind of bad, but amidst the big changes and transformations that are coming up 
this year, mainly I, my partner and I, we are moving to South America <laughs> later this year. So an international major move. I'm going to be living there for probably three years. So living abroad is going to be huge, a big change for me. So I, I think full energy and just, just following where the path leads um, is going to be a great energy to carry with me into these huge changes. Just the idea of surrender, the idea of being open to change and exploration, that's going to help me kind of counterbalance the fears and anxieties I'm feeling too, which I think are natural, but you know. Um, so yeah, the Fool is my card of the year. And then here I have my index started. I just have uh, the first 33 pages basically are yearly things or um, spreads that aren't necessarily um, just focused on one month at a time kind of thing. And then I divide things into months. As you can see, I have January already and then started out February here. So big spreads here and then monthly and weekly spreads here basically. And so I have four pages allotted to that. I have a 2018 in review as uh, the kickoff to the bullet journal officially. And I just listed the top three most important events or developments from 2018 and the goals and the things that I was able to accomplish um, in 2018. And then here I have my future log. And as you can see here, for February, I kind of messed up the cursive a little bit and ran out of room for the R, for the first R in February. So I'm just pointing that out, not only because it kind of bothers me, but <laughs> I'm trying to be zen about it because the truth is, this is my work journal. This isn't for anybody else. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to make this um, into anything other than what it is for me. Something that gives me a little bit of creative expression, um, a little bit of me time as I update my journal every day, but also as a way to track my progress on my projects and stuff. And so um, I'm just saying that because sometimes when you um, start watching bullet journals on YouTube and you see all these beautiful and intricate and artistic and decorative journals and it can feel overwhelming so if you're kind of new to bullet journaling just you know give yourself permission to make your journal whatever you want it to be and whatever you need it to be really like if you want a really minimalist um, bullet journal using just one single pen the whole way through like do it if you want it flowery and decorative and if you want to use your journal as a place to practice self-care through artistic creation, do it. Like, you know, there's a whole spectrum of bullet journaling. Um, as you can see, I ain't no calligraphy expert. <laughs> My handwriting sucks, I know it, but it's unique to me and I love it for that, you know. And so sometimes there'll be little typos. Sometimes I'll have to scratch something out. It's not perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect, all right? So anyway. Future log, this is the first time I'm doing a vertical spread for my future log, um, which is really fun. And also talking about creative expression, just kind of shaking things up a little bit. I'm trying to kind of uh, color code each of my months. And so as you can see, January, um, I have blue tones and then February will be red and pink and purple for Valentine's Day. And I have a little decorative, um, a little, just a little decoration for each month here uh, based on whatever major holidays going on in that month or the season. For example, in June, I have the sun because it's the summer solstice in June for the northern hemisphere. Um, so that's been really fun. And so when we get into January, when I show you my January uh, monthly trackers and spreads and stuff, you'll see more blue showing up uh, just as a way to color code and organize the journal. Now for the second half of the year, I'm probably going to be moving to Chile sometime between June and September at the latest. I'm probably, I'm, it's probably going to happen between June and July, 
if it doesn't happen in our July and August, if it doesn't happen in June. So I, since I'm going to be in a different part of the world with different celebrations and different seasons in the Southern Hemisphere, I kind of left the little decorative element off for the second half of the year until I figure things out and then I'll go in and color code these months. But I've been really enjoying the vertical layout of, um, of the future log or the year at a glance or whatever you like to call it. And I just write down the dates for important events, due dates for things, people's birthdays, holidays, that kind of stuff. And then we have my, this is the second um, overtly witchy thing in this work journal, the second and the last thing that you'll see. It's just a goals tarot reading, and so I have my academic goals, I wrote them out here, and then drew a card with the Voyager tarot, one of my favorite tarot decks. And I did the same for self-care goals, financial goals, and then spiritual goals. So that was really nice. Here I have a layout to track my academic goals uh, for 2019. And so I keep track of the number of hours that I work each month. I have a separate, uh, just a cheap composition notebook where I draw graphs. Just at any time I sit down to do work, whether it's just 30 minutes or it's three hours, I log that time spent dedicated to my dissertation. Just to give myself credit where credit is due, give myself credit for sitting down and doing the work. And so each month I'm going to track the number of hours um, here, and then I have the three milestones I would like to hit for 2019 here. A reminder to take it one day at a time. <laughs> and then um, the fellowship applications that uh, maybe were successful from last year or the ones that I'm going to be applying to again this year. And then professional development opportunities, uh, conferences, meetings, that kind of stuff go here. Moving right along. So this is a spread for just basic monthly budgeting. And so I have the US monthly budget here. Of course, I haven't filled out um, the specific information, but just income and what kind of bills and stuff do we have to pay. And then once we're in Chile, I'm gonna do the same here, of course, in Chilean pesos, which is gonna be fun getting used to that conversion. <laughs> I think it's roughly, it usually hovers between six to 700 Chilean pesos to one dollar. Um, but yeah, so hopefully the conversion will be in our favor when it's time to move from dollars to pesos. But anyway, so here I have a little relationships tracker and I have this, um, my cup runneth over. I can't remember what part of the Bible that's from, if that's from Proverbs or something like that, or Psalms, I don't know. <laughs> Bad former Catholic. But I always liked that that concept, my cup runneth over, meaning your cup is so full um, of love, of people in your life that care about you, spiritually full, uh, full and fulfilled. And so each month I just want to remind myself of the relationships I have, not just with my partner, but my friendships and my relationships with the people closest to me. Um, and I'm going to do that by doodle doodling which is not normal for me, but again, here I am practicing that visual, <laughs> the visual art I'm not so good at. Uh, and you might be able to tell, I have little pencil, um, little sketches of different types of cups that will runneth over in 2019. And so I'll just go in and kind of refine the drawing and fix it and uh, color it in every month. And so I have 12 of those different types of cups. Mental Emotional Health Tracker Summary. So this is divided in months as well. And uh, this will make more sense when I show you um, my mental and emotional health tracker for January. And so this is at a glance for the whole year and more specific information is can be found within the monthly spreads for each month. And so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but for every month I have the average anxiety score, average depression score, number of self-care activities, and then any any notes I might need to remind myself of. And these scores, they're based on a graph 
um, a dot graph that I have going on for self-care activities and also anxiety and depression score. Again, that'll make sense here in a few minutes. This is just kind of a brain dump page for self-care ideas. Um, and I have them divided into mindfulness and meditation, uh, get moving, you know, get my body moving, treat myself, like taking a bath or buying, you know, uh, buying myself some Thai food or something like that, you know. Um, let food be your medicine, so uh, taking care of myself through the food I eat and making sure the food I eat is healthy and home-cooked and delicious. Um, connect with spirits, so spiritual activities, and then cleaning activities, because I've found that um, I, I'm not like perfect when it comes to cleaning my home, um, but I do maintain it. I think um, it's important to respect your home because, you know, it's, it's where you live, it's where your most intimate parts of your life happen, it's, um, it's good to give thanks to your home and so I do that through keeping it more or less clean and tidy. <laughs> it ain't perfect, but it, it's, it helps me feel better, so yeah. Now this is, I've been thinking about doing this couch to 5k thing for a long time. I don't know if it's actually going to happen this year, <laughs> but I wrote out a plan for it just in case. Um, and I, I don't know it's going to happen because May and June are going to be so crazy for me because I'll have to move out of my apartment in Georgia in May. Um, put a lot of stuff in my parents' basement in Kentucky and then fly to Chile sometime around this time frame too. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but um, I at least want to get to the point where I can run one continu continuous mile not only on the treadmill at the gym, but also out and about in the real world with hills and terrain and stuff because I haven't been able to run one continuous mile since I was in college and that's 10 plus years ago. So it's time to get my butt back into shape and that'll be really nice to be able to run a mile again. Here's my 20 before 2020. It looks like a five-year-old drew this and I love it. <laughs> I had a celestial planetary theme going on here, but basically the idea is I, I go in and anytime I complete one of these activities <clears throat> or goals, I just color in the planet or the star or the cloud. Um, and so I want to reread the Lord of the Rings. I want to go outside more. I want to, uh, for one more year, successfully pr prevent unwanted pregnancies using the fertility awareness method. So that one will be colored in at the end of the year. I want to do more pelvic floor exercises to remember to do my Kegels. <laughs> um, I want to do mindfulness practice every day and I want to do uh, social media free Sundays. I want to take Sunday off from social media except for maybe watching the occasional YouTube video. but just take a break from Instagram and Facebook. So I'm still kind of getting into the groove and establishing some of these habits, but um, for example, just trying to practice mindfulness every day, even if I don't get to it every day. I mean, we're not even at the end of January, but I can already tell a significant difference in how, how much is helping me. So yeah, 20 before 2020. And then I have the movies we would like to watch. And I drew little VHS tapes for those of us who remember what those are. <laughs> um, but uh, I have it divided into classic movies, Latin American movies, and then other. And so I'm still putting together, this is like our wish list of movies we would like to watch in 2019. And then here I have my bookshelf for 2019. Excuse me. And I have it divided into three categories, curiosity, um, in Espanol, because my Spanish is a little rusty and I'm about to move to South America, so I should better, <laughs> I should get on that. But I also like to um, dive a little bit more deeply into Latin American literature um, and also just take advantage of Chilean literature while I'm down there. Take advantage of my easy access to books while I'm down there, right? 
and then pleasure. And so here I have the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So I'm about 100 pages into fellowship right now. And oh, it's so nice to reread those again. Here I have my master grocery list, which is really, really helpful. Um, we cook the majority of our meals. We only eat out like three times a month. Um, so we do a lot of grocery shopping and we do that every Sunday, no, Saturday morning. And we divide it into the different stores that we usually go to because we know the prices and we know like where it's cheaper to get one thing, you know, versus the other store. But if you do a lot of grocery shopping or if you're planning on picking up the practice or the habit of meal planning, like cooking more and stuff like that, I highly recommend just going through your pantry and thinking about what you need and dividing it into the stores you get it from. And so that way, every Saturday morning or Friday evening, when I start putting the grocery list together, I can just go back to the master list as a reference and check every little thing so we don't forget anything. <laughs> and here I have nuevas palabras y frases chilenas. That means new words and Chilean phrases. And that is the naughty word in Chilean Spanish, concha tu madre. Um, it's very common, but <laughs> that basically means like, fuck yeah, basically in Chilean Spanish. So yeah, my partner is Chilean. We're moving to Santiago um, in a few, about six months, six or seven months. And so while I'm down there, I want to collect new phrases and words, um, phrases and words that are specific to Chilean culture uh, that are used in everyday speech. And so that way I can help not only become more and more bilingual, but um, just appreciate Chilean culture and Chilean Spanish because I learned Spanish in the United States and most people in the United States who learn Spanish in high school, for example, they're either going to be taught the Spanish from Spain with that accent and vocabulary, the Spanish from Mexico or from Puerto Rico, or at least that's what they're going to be most exposed to. Not a lot of people are, are exposed to Chilean Spanish. Um, so it's unique. I love it. I love uh, hearing it and I love the fact that I'm gonna be able to practice that. So I'm gonna use these pages for that. Here's my moving to Chile checklist. So I have that broken down into little to-do lists for each month. So right now I'm in the process of renewing my passport, which is long overdue. I should have done this last year, but whatever. Um, and then we move on. So US contacts, so everybody's uh, phone numbers and addresses that we'll need uh, who live in the US, mainly like my advisor and my parents and my sister and family members and friends up here. And then the same for contacts <clears throat> in Chile. And then here I have my ideal work schedule, my block work schedule where I divided the day into sets of uh, or chunks of hours. Um, and I wrote down my my goals, like uh, how many hours per day I would, I, I aim to dedicate towards research, and also a reminder for self care. So self care goals. Remember to take schedule in days off, at least one day a week. I try on Sundays to take a break from research and clean the house and do the laundry and all that kind of stuff. Uh, scheduling vacation days, even if that means you just give yourself a two, to, you know, the weekend off. <laughs> that little mini vacation can be a blessing every once in a while and scheduling time for creativity. And then in general, what I would like to do for the weekends. And um, yeah, so this is kind of just an ideal, I mean, you make an ideal schedule knowing that you're not going to necessarily hit and meet the schedule perfectly every day, but it's just something to aim for, just a way to make sure that you're um, tracking your productivity, but also uh, making time to take care of yourself, which is so important. And then we come to January. So every month is gonna have a two-page kind of month at a glance, and like I, 
I said earlier, keep an eye out for the blue colors. So the blue is January's color. Different shades of blue to help me organize that. Top things I would like get, to get done uh, this month, the summary of this month, and then 12, uh, excuse me, a 12 week year. Um, so the 12 week year is a kind of planning and productivity system, which I'm going to talk in more in depth about that in my video coming out next when I talk about my different planning systems. Um, I'll go into more in depth about that, but um, I started, this is my first 12 week year of this year. I've done it a couple times last year. And it's just basically you you sit down and make a plan to meet certain goals within a 12 week time period. So each week is each week is a month, right? Kind of thing. And then I have my January at a glance, just different events and birthdays and things going on this month my gratitude log so each day I just write down one line of what I'm most grateful for during the month of January and here's my tracker and so if you remember um, at the beginning of my bullet journal I have a mental and emotional health kind of yearly tracker at a glance well the data uh, for that tracker is coming from here so here I have my habit tracker and some of the things I figured out I actually don't want to track anymore and so I'm going to revise and edit this as the month goes on uh, or for next month rather but here in color I have all of the habits that I would like to uh, do more of or make sure that I do regularly and then down here in gray in this little section I have the things that um, not necessarily like I want to cut back on, but I just want to make sure that I don't do these too much. Or I'm just kind of curious to see um, how they might be affecting my mental, emotional health. And then up here at this top part, oops, I'm shaking the camera around, sorry. Let me zoom in a little bit. I have my mental emotional health trackers. So red is for my anxiety, blue is for my depression. <clears throat> and then I have a little scale here, which I think I'm going to have to edit and kind of, I'm going to have to revise this for next month because I don't really like the different categories I have here from 1 to 10 for, um, for the anxiety and depression. One being uh, stable and happy and centered and balanced and 10 being like major depressive ex episodes or major anxiety episodes. <clears throat> but the reason I have these two together is because I want to see how my habits might be affecting or correlating with my moods. And so if I do more of these good habits, for lack of a better term for them, maybe I can see that being reflected in my chart for my mental emotional health. And then I'll take this data back to um, that page at the beginning of the bullet journal. I can find it quickly where I have things at a glance here and record it in this area so um, tracking this sort of stuff and being more mindful about it has been so <clears throat> so helpful <clears throat> let me get some water real quick All right. Oh my goodness, this video is like an hour long. <laughs> this might just be my work bullet journal, actually. I might have to split this into two videos, y'all. <laughs> oh, keep an eye out for part two then when we talk about my witchy bullet journal. So anyway, I'm almost done with the work bullet journal though. Blah, blah, blah. Can't get the word out. So here is my weekly spread. Right? Did I skip over something? No, I just went straight into the weekly spread. So it's January 21st through the 27th. Here is where I keep track of the things I gotta do to meet my goals for my 12 week year in this box here. 
Um, so that includes research and then yoga and walking at the gym. And my goal is to fill out nine of these 11 blanks uh, by the end of this week, which would give me a score of an 82, which is a solid B or B minus. Um, last week, I think I scored eight out of 11, which is a 73 or 75. So um, one thing that they emphasize in the 12 week year is to actually score yourself, to, um, to be real with yourself uh, as far as like, are you really putting in the work you need to put in to get these goals done? It's, it, the score kind of provides a nice little, uh, just a little flame under your butt <laughs> to get you to get you to work. Um, so I try to keep up with that. And then uh, I have what my top priority is for this week, which is renewing my passport. And then the top three things I gotta get done this week. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I had my gyno exam. And then just a little motivational quote. Uh, believe in yourself and the rest will fall into place. And then over here I have my week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend down here. And the tasks uh, I gotta get done for work. Uh, I have work here, general cooking, cleaning tasks, and then self-care stuff that I would like to get done for each day. And that's how I divide my weeks and every day. So. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna have to split this into two videos. <laughs> so, um, let me get that set up. Stay tuned, I'm gonna jump right into my witchy bullet journal. Uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. I'll probably upload both of these videos simultaneously. So yes, <laughs> check out part two where I talk about my witchy bullet journal.